Well, number one, Alabama preparing for its West showdown with Texas A&M this weekend and Heisman winning quarterback Bryce Young was quote doing some things in practice, according to head coach Nick Saban. Young remains day to day after suffering a shoulder sprain in the Crimson Tides 49 26 win over Arkansas last week. And here's more from Saban's press conference on Wednesday. And let's just say a little bit combative when it comes to the topic of his QB1. You guys think I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with our offense and our team? You, you, you might as well make it up. I, I saw today where there's headlines in the paper that, you know, I'm going to keep it a secret what we're going to do with Bryce. I'm, that's it sounded like me making that statement but it re- i've never said that but it it was there in black and white like so you can make up whatever you want to make up you know look at somebody else's running quarterback and say they should put these plays in i think that'd be a better way to do it Maybe a little continuation from his post-game interview with her colleague Jenny Dell. This is video making the rounds on social media involves Alabama pass catchers getting in work with an off-camera passer. Mind you, video released by the university, not anyone else uh, catching this and only added the level of speculation and conversation about the health and availability of one Bryce Young. All right, let's get a guy who's dialed in. 24-7 sports Alabama guru, Travis Ryer. So, Travis, what's your understanding of the Bryce Young situation right now? Yeah, it's pretty much close to the vest, I would say, uh, Tommy. And oh, an expectation that he would do some things as the week ramped up. It sounds like he's been able to do some of that. But kind of an exact expectation for Saturday is wait and see mode right now. And Oh, that certainly brings Jalen Milrow, keeps Jalen Milrow very much in the mix. But uh, I would say the fact that that Bryce has been able to do at least some of these things early in the week is encouraging, at least. And we're looking at video again, of course, of that injury. And you bring up uh, Jalen Milrow, who filled in admirably 65 yards and a touchdown, racking up 91 and another score on the ground. How different, though, does the offense look with him as opposed to Bryce Young? We know, of course, Bryce Young could do a lot of things, sort of ad lib and and be able to do things himself. Yeah, Jalen is, as you saw in the fourth quarter of that Arkansas game, very capable of exploding for plays with his legs at any time. He's got great size. He's got elite speed. He can make people miss. And he showed you all of those attributes in that 77-yard run. Now, the question becomes more of balance within the, the offense with Jalen in, in there, specifically throwing the football. Can he take advantage of some of those weapons on the outside? And against Arkansas, it was largely young players like Kobe Prentice and Isaiah Bond who came up with explosive plays in the passing game. So I don't think you'll see a condensed playbook by any means if it is Jalen on Saturday. But I do think you'll see more in the way of RPO off of zone read action and certainly the potentials there for some design quarterback runs with an emphasis maybe more so on the red zone. As I'm curious, what's the, I guess, confidence level slash concern level because they go hand in hand concern for Bryce Young, confidence in Jalen in terms of if this becomes a, a, a multiple week thing down in Tuscaloosa? Well, it's the meat of the schedule right now. This was the anticipated game going back to the preseason, Tommy. Then you look at a road trip to Tennessee. And I think of the two, Tennessee might be the most concerning because you could find yourself in a bit of a shootout with Hendon Hooker and that Tennessee offense. And I think with Bryce Young, Alabama is more than capable of winning that kind of game in Knoxville. Without Bryce, it obviously becomes more of a concern. And I think even with A&M this week, you know, A&M – not especially good against the run so far this season, but if it's able to commit an extra defender to the box to address that with Alabama and force Jalen and those receivers to make some plays in the passing game, you could get a game that turns into more of a slog, which I think at this point, given the struggles A&M's had on offense, the Aggies would certainly welcome. You referenced the hype surrounding this game. And and in the offseason, this was the game of the year, game of the century, one for the ages because of the comments from both head coaches. Bama's kept up its end of the bargain. What's the view from the Texas A&M side, do you think, given all the things that Jimbo Fisher has had to deal with so far this year? Yeah, it's been disappointing. Even in the win over Arkansas a couple weeks ago, you got the sense that that was just a 
a, a survival situation that they were able to manage there late in that win over the Razorbacks. So, you know, but it's also a situation similar to a year ago, right, where you had A&M struggling going into the Alabama game, a primetime affair on CBS, and the Aggies do the unthinkable and scoring 10 points in the final three minutes to win that one 41 to 38. So as far as having ammunition to address his team with this week, I don't think Alabama has played anywhere close to its best game through five contests. And then you have the situation with A&M a year ago. So more so than the Saban and Fisher uh, skirmish from the off season, I, I think it's more about you know, these guys a year ago were in the same situation and and gave us our first loss of the 2021 campaign. So the number is pretty big. It's north of three touchdowns. It sits at 24. We know Bama is also a very good first half cover team. What do you anticipate in terms of the game itself? Do you think the Aggies cover the number or do you think that Alabama is able to carry that 24, maybe then some? Really tough to say without knowing Bryce's exact availability or inavailability for this week. You know, Tommy, I'm wondering, can I check in, like, can I break in later in the week, like the Aaron Judge home run <laughs> countdown and, and maybe check in with a different pick? Right now, without knowing, 24 points seems like a lot. This is still a very talented A&M roster, and you know, you've got uncertainty with both teams at the quarterback position. So it's the classic, I think, stay away game on Wednesday. But, you know, maybe later in the week you develop a – a stronger feel for one side or the other. Yeah, we're not holding you to it. And if anything, I think this number is with Bryce Young playing. So if it's not the case, I can see a lot of Aggie money bringing this number down. Quickly before I let you go, with Nick Saban, if we go a little macro here with the transfer portal, he's kind of the, the Game of Thrones transfer portal, even though he may not like it publicly, he's been able to master it himself, hasn't he? No doubt. And he cherry picks, as we say down here in the South. Uh, he doesn't go for developmental guys. He goes for impact guys, and when you look at that list, well, Jameer Gibbs, 206 rushing yards last week with most of that in the fourth quarter. Jermaine Burton, it's been a little bit of a sluggish start for him and the receiving core in general, but there's certainly still the potential for him to be a major contributor before this season is over. And Tyler Steen is the guy probably people aren't talking about enough at the left tackle spot because he has stepped right in there and solidified that situation with Evan Neal moving on to the National Football League. So, absolutely, uh, the last couple of seasons, the portal's been very good to Alabama. Not so much in terms of quantity, but certainly in terms of quality. Travis, certainly appreciate it. Uh, thank you for the info and insight as we get ready for an SEC doubleheader on CBS. Again, we're talking about the late game with Texas A&M and Alabama. Before that, it's Auburn and Georgia. I think the Tigers have played all home games so far this year. Also another uh, pretty, pretty big spread with that Dogs game at 3.30 Eastern on CBS and streaming on Paramount Plus Saturday. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.